So with major thanks to Square Enix for gifting me a copy of Star Ocean Second Story R, I was able to experience Star Ocean 2 for the first time. Now, I've played Star Ocean 3 till the end of time, till the end of time, and I've also played Star Ocean 6 The Divine Force and really enjoyed that, having reviewed it last year. But Star Ocean Second Story R may have actually eclipsed Final Fantasy 16 as my favourite Square Enix RPG this year. But I'm just so happy to see old school RPGs coming forward so much this year, from Octopath Traveler 2 to Star Ocean Second Story R to Sea of Stars. Something has just sort of clicked with JRPGs recently, and I'm just so happy to see the retro style in a modern era. So Second Story R is a remake of the PS1 title Star Ocean 2. And like Star Ocean 2, you get a choice of two different protagonists. You have Claude C. Kenny, who is your spacefarer that needs to kind of stick to his prime directive, if you know Star Trek, that, like while he's exploring an underdeveloped planet, and Rayna, who is a sort of villager within this underdeveloped planet that definitely has more than meets the eye to her. And while the base narrative of Star Ocean 2 or Second Story R doesn't sort of like change or wiggle around it very much. Literally everything else around it can because you can only recruit a certain number of characters for your party as you progress through the game and you have a choice of those two main characters so there are certain scenes that you wouldn't see if you had picked Claude that Reyna would have experienced and vice versa. Uh, there's just so much malleability to the story, We even within quite a classic story arc for its PS1 roots, that you just encourage to play over and over again just to experience everything the story has to offer. As I said, the party members, of which there are more than you can recruit, are a major highlight within Star Ocean Second Story R. Now, I've been playing this on stream, and my chat led me to the character Opera Vectra, who I found absolutely wonderful and really enjoyed, but there is every chance that I could have completely missed her while I was playing through if I'd been doing it without a little bit of guidance from my chat. And therefore, I would have come across completely different characters playing through it that perhaps you, who may have played this game before, wouldn't have seen. And each of these characters appeals to a different demographic. You have characters that I really enjoy, like Bowman, who takes himself very seriously, and then you'll have characters like Welch, who may appeal to more kind of anime, sort of the, the anime trope of the cute girl, where it doesn't really do anything for me, but is very popular. So it's really nice to see characters of such a wide range coming to the forefront in a game like this, and you get to explore the kind of relationships you have with those characters through the personal action system. So when you enter a town, you enter it as a party as you normally would, but you can press the square button, change it to PA mode, wander around with just your main character on their own and interact with your party members, which can lead to items, conversations, even other party members that you may not have seen if you didn't explore it. So there's plenty to do if you might have missed it the first time around. So let's just get something out of the way here. This game is stunning. Like, I adore this art style within this game. I don't know whether you want to call it 2.5D or 2D HD because it doesn't look quite the same as the likes of Octopath Traveler or Live Alive, but it's still stunning to look at. There's like the, the environments have been completely rebuilt from the ground up, but you still retain that pixel sprite art from the characters themselves. All the artwork for them has been redone, of course, and it's all absolutely beautiful. Like, I adore the, the artwork in the menus. The menus have been overhauled. Everything has just been redone with a completely fresh coat of paint. And I think that remakes like this one that retain that feel while still maintaining a modern look is something I think should be held to higher court because you just don't get guide games like this anymore. Everyone's so concerned with these high production values and visual effects that have to be like super photorealistic that you kind of lose that magic that games had from back in the day and this game just serves it in droves. In terms of gameplay loops, combat in this game is relatively simple, like it, it literally very similar to Tales games where you'll go into a random battle which thankfully 
originally were literally random battles but have been remade now into having kind of sprites appear on the screen that you can tackle and go into battles with chaining some together if you so choose so that you can get more xp for fighting more than one at once and you get just a very simple overlay of just cast and skills and everything going off left right and center it's like a fireworks show essentially and quite frankly i'm here for exploding particle effects everywhere it's how i got into jrpgs in the first place so it's really nice to see it here is it super complex no not really like you know it's you're not expecting anything devil may cry related or anything like you would have done with final fantasy 16 but it still works like it's still very functional and some, if you want more in-depth kind of content when it comes to the game, the item creation system allows you to develop different kind of everyday skills like cooking or crafting or alchemy or, you know, all sorts of writing, art that you can develop each of your characters with individually that then can create different items or have varying different effects that also stack up. And if you've got enough characters with those skills like leveled, you get super specialties, which are really powerful for the whole party. And I was really daunted by this when I first saw it, but it turned out to be really fun. And I really enjoy just seeing the different combinations of things that I could make. And I definitely think this is a game that you can go back to after you've kind of learnt its systems and absolutely break in half. I'm pretty sure I've already come across at least one weapon that I'm not supposed to have at the point in the game that I've that I got it because I haven't seen anything <laughs> like it since. For those of you who are wondering, Sword of Marvels might be something that rings a bell to those of you who might have played Star Ocean 2 originally, but I'm fairly sure I'm not supposed to have that. But it, just knowing the different possibilities that are available in Star Ocean Second Story R just makes me want to keep going back for more. The actual like remade portions of Star Ocean Second Story R don't necessarily include a lot of like what you'd normally expect from a, a remake like this where loads of extra content's been tacked on the end or anything, but what you can see is the attention to detail and quality of life improvements through the wazoo th throughout or the whole game, not just the visual element, but just the ways in which the party interacts, there are various things that you can add on to weapons, factors they call it in this, that can break weapons for super bosses later on. The difficulty settings are already pretty challenging if you set it to universe, it's hardest difficulty, and some of Star Ocean's super bosses are some of the most well known in the genre, so to see them come back and to see the abilities are like formed around them just works so well and as somebody who's not played star ocean 2 until now i can absolutely see the reverence that its fan base has for it through talking with fans either through stream or just generally speaking so my like content creator friends are absolutely obsessed with star ocean 2 i think you might have a new recruit because i think i might be pretty obsessed with it too in conclusion it with star ocean the divine force coming out last year and star ocean second story are coming out this year I'm honestly really pleased to see the Star Ocean franchise doing so well again. You know, Star Ocean Divine Force was pretty good. I wouldn't say it was the best RPG I'd ever played, but I'd say given the budget that it had at the time, it was pretty good. This one blows it out of the water and actually elevates itself to one of my favorite RPGs this year. There's just so much to love. The characters are fantastic. The story is old school in a way that just works. The combat is fun and simple and easily breakable. There's a lot of range in terms of difficulty. The game is what everything I'm looking for in a JRPG is in this game. It's simple to execute, but difficult to master. There's crazy shenanigans that you can do. There's fireworks shows of abilities going off left, right and center. And it's just got a lovable cast of characters. I haven't had this much fun with a Star Ocean game since till the end of time. And that was back on the PS2. So, should we, can we get a remake of that one next? Anyways, that's going to be all for today's video. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or any of the others I've been posting recently, please do give a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications so that you can keep up with all the various videos that I've been making. Still kind of buzzing from like FF7 Ever Crisis's little hints at what we might be getting as well as Final Fantasy 14. 
do feel free to come and find me over on Twitch or like TikTok. I'm started posting on TikTok as well. So definitely come and find me on there. All of the links for my socials are down in the description box below. And of course, if you'd like to consider supporting the channel, I do feel free to check out my Patreon page, also linked in the description box below, where you can be put up on the screen, just like all of these lovely people you can see on the screen right now, and you'd be supporting my journey as a full-time content creator. So I thank you very much in advance for that. And once again, a big thank you to Square Wings for gifting me a copy of Star Ocean Second Story R. I love it. I really love it. And like I say, I, I, I'm not putting this down for a while. Totally understand why it's got the cult following that it does. So thank you all very much once again for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care everyone. Bye.